There's a sign at the end of the hallway where I work that cheerfully announces, amazing things happen here. As much as I would love to agree with that, because I work there and I think I do amazing things, I have to ask, is this claim testable? What would it take for a thing to qualify as amazing? I mean, I do things. Are those amazing? Here's another rather silly example from online news. Is this claim sufficiently precise to be falsifiable? The Epic Times announces experts predict that the Fed will do something unexpected soon. Wow, that is some hard hitting journalism. But could this claim be falsified? Could you argue that something has happened? Was it in fact unexpected? Did it happen quickly enough that we could call it soon? Could you even say that it was something? If the hypothesis is not falsifiable, it's gonna be impossible to prove. Falsifiability means that the hypothesis makes sufficiently precise predictions that if it was wrong, we could measure it. That doesn't mean that the hypothesis is wrong. It means that it is sufficiently precise that if it was wrong, we could demonstrate that it was wrong. That is what makes the hypothesis falsifiable. Let me illustrate with this idea of there being life on other planets. If we start with a hypothesis that there is life on other planets, could we prove that true? Absolutely. And how would you do that? Go to another planet, find life on that other planet, and we have demonstrated that yes, there is life on other planets. Can you prove false that there is life on other planets? We go to other planets and no signs of life. We go to still more planets and still no signs of life. Have we now demonstrated that there is not life on other planets? Well, someone could easily say, yes, but there's probably another planet out there somewhere where we would find life. No matter how many times we don't find life on other planets, we haven't proved that life on other planets doesn't exist. But now let's give it a twist. Let's test the hypothesis that there is not life on other planets. Could you demonstrate that it is true that there is not life on other planets? After going to multiple planets and not finding signs of life, we could say that the available evidence supports the contention that there is not life on other planets. We haven't proven that it is true, but we have shown that the ev evidence is pointing in that direction. On the other hand, testing the claim that there is not life on other planets gives us something that we don't get when we test the opposite of that hypothesis. It gives us the ability to falsify. In other words, if we go to another planet and we find life on that other planet, we have definitively proven that this hypothesis is false. How do we know that there is not life on other planets is a false hypothesis? Because we found life on other planets. This is a falsifiable hypothesis. You remember Scooby-Doo? Everything I really need to know about science, I learned from Scooby-Doo. Scooby and the gang traveled around in the mystery machine, constantly running into mysteries that had to be solved. Like down at the old abandoned theme park, there were ghosts. And the mystery machine happened to run out of gas in front of that old abandoned theme park. What can you do? You've got to explore. You've got to get to the secret of why all of these strange happenings are occurring. Where should we begin as we evaluate these extraordinary claims that a ghost is haunting the abandoned amusement park? Should we begin with the null hypothesis that there are no ghosts? Or should we use the alternative hypothesis that there are ghosts? Which explanation is more likely? Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And supernatural explanations are, by definition, extraordinary. But if we abandon skeptical thinking, 
and start with the idea, I want to believe, then we tend to look only for evidence that supports that belief. Or we interpret ambiguous data as supporting the belief in ghosts. Or we ignore contradictory evidence in order to preserve that belief. But when we start with a falsifiable hypothesis that there are no ghosts, and then, after a little meddling, we unmask the amusement park caretaker as the one behind the supposed ghost sightings, then there is no room for explanation by ghosts. Although disproving one ghost does not prove that no ghosts exist, with multiple disconfirmations, we can say that the evidence does not support a belief in ghosts. Only if you want to believe in ghosts are ghosts a plausible explanation. Ghosts are not required. It works without that assumption. Or as Tim Minchin said, Because throughout history, every mystery ever solved has turned out to be not magic. The reason why faith healers don't work at a hospital is the same reason why psychics don't play the lottery. What does watching Scooby-Doo teach us about hypothesis testing and believing in ghosts and monsters? All the real monsters are human. And everything supernatural or otherworldly is some jerk trying to scare you so he can make money. That, my friends, is the kind of skeptical thinking that's going to help keep your thoughts on track. And it explains why we start with a null hypothesis, one that can definitely be demonstrated to be false. Now we can put these pieces together as we explore specifically the five steps of hypothesis testing.